Welcome, everyone, to my gorgeous son, the podcast that I host with my son, Andrew Bush, and I'm his father, Roly, and our intern, Everardo! What's up? We got a wonderful guest here this afternoon, but we're not going to talk to him just yet, but he's in the room. Say hi. Hello, everyone. Oh, that's a little teaser as to who's coming who's coming down the pipeline. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, this is a podcast where we talk about where Andy's at in his life and uh, what he needs, and I try and get advice from strangers and whatnot. We got an intern that we picked up from Ryerson's podcast school named Everardo. I've already introduced him. Andrew, what new with you? Absolutely nothing really, Dad. I'm, I'm just kind of been, uh, I've been trying to get a job recently, try to figure that out because um, I really feel bad about not paying any rent, so I want to give you some money. Well, where have you been looking for jobs? Um, you know, all over. I mean, I've tried to apply to various uh, restaurants and uh, I've decided to go back to school. For what? Take... For what? What are you going back to school for? Well, I thought I would, I thought I would go back to uh, for um, just restaurant management, so I'm hoping that I can get, some, get myself a... Like a trade school. Restaurant management. Well, a George Brown sort of school. Yeah, like I was hoping for like a, a restaurant management kind you of You want to manage a restaurant. Well, I mean, I feel like I'm I feel like I've kind of like set my goals a little bit too high in my life. So I'm I'm just not not to say that restaurant management's a bad thing. Coming out strong against restaurant managers. I'm not saying And that's in the a wake of, of Anthony Bourdain's death, <laughs> no less. I don't think it's a bad thing. Coming I just out swinging. I'm, I'm just saying that I was I was trying for things that I couldn't necessarily achieve. So I need to to set my goals a, just a little bit like personally. Like I like had lower. no idea you had in, any interest in food whatsoever. I, I, I really don't. I have no. Then what the hell are you doing? Because I don't know what to, to do with my life. So I'm trying something. You sit in restaurants a lot. You visit restaurants. Well, a that's lot. where I would write a lot of my a lot of a lot of my stories. Yeah. And, and You're scripts. still a frequent uh, visitor at uh, Free Times Cafe. Free Times Cafe. Try the chicken it. Caesar salad. Is that your restaurant's only going to serve chicken Caesar salads? <laughs> well, no, we would have a variety, but that would certainly be a specialty, I think. A variety of Caesar Actually, salads. Actually, I don't even want to own a restaurant. I just want to manage one. That's right. Just manage one. Because I don't think that I really... Is that a school? Just go back You curriculum? absolutely can go to school for, for restaurant management. Managing a restaurant? There's... there's I, I, my, my school also has something for equine massage. That's... Uh, no, that's Equine mas- massaging horses? I'm not kidding. That's an actual... Yeah. What? Yeah. That's a trade? Yeah. Everardo, uh, you, wanna, you have thoughts on that? I that, I find that insane. <laughs> Thank you, Everard. <laughs> it's it's true. It is it is it's the there's only one uh, class in, in all of North America. It's in London, Ontario, and they they offer equine massage. Why are we still ma- massaging horses? Well, it's for racing. What, what do you mean still? I mean, that just seems like something from the past. Why you think that's we... like a thing in the 1800s and 1700s? You know, I can see maybe like... Uh... You can see that being a job more so in the 1800s <laughs> when people were working to live. When horses were more prominent, you know. Oh, you horses... think it was like a mechanic? Like equine massage <laughs> is like... So you just find out what's wrong with your horse? Is that what you're trying well, to say? You know, is that what you're suggesting? That's yeah. not what he's, is Back that what in the day when we would ride horses uh, for transportation or farming or whatever... Sure. Um, they would get tired, so they would need more massages. So you think they would bring in that Victorian staple, <laughs> the equine masseuse? Yeah, and you, you know, when's you're the, out of your gourd. Why, today, yeah. When's the last time you've even seen a horse? Let me ask you a, a question about uh, <laughs> yes, this proposed yes, equine. as yet unintroduced <laughs> guest. Uh, if I may interject, uh, oh, please. Quick question about this equine masseuse. Did you picture a gentleman with uh, very big hands? Yeah, I mean, well, a horse is pretty big, so you would need... Mm. You that that's, a, that's a prerequisite of an equine masseur? <laughs> big hands or, like, uh, at least strong arms. I'll tell you who wouldn't qualify for that jump, uh, job. Um, a certain Cheeto in charge. <laughs> oh. A certain wow. Mr. Drumpft. <laughs> political. A certain Mr. Donald T. Uh, rump. Wow. Emphasis on the rump. That's a good one, Dad. Because he makes an ass of himself on the regular. Um, anywho, he has, been, he, has, he has been in the news lately saying a lot of terrible things about Canada. I don't know when this podcast is going to be coming out, but <laughs> just to timestamp it, this is the week in, uh, in the year of our Lord 2018 when Anthony Bourdain has passed and Donald Trump has been ripping on the Canucks north of the border. Yep, and I don't mean Vancouver's hockey team. 
No, and I believe a G- G7 just recently happened as well. Just, G7. They've yeah. got that wonderful photo of just everyone leering at him. Angela Merkel looking down Le- on him like a little bad boy. That's right. So, you know, we need to get this out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, can you please yeah, introduce our guest? I wanted to add some color to everything. Our guest, in case it's not painfully obvious, is the Dr. Fraser Crane. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome. I... Here on the podcast. Now we're gonna we're gonna get into some real introductions into what you're doing in town and all that. But we're in the course of something here. And you were gonna say something about G7, which we uh, Everard, as we all know, stands for uh, the Great Seven. Great Seven. <laughs> Andy, what were you going to say? Just well, I was just going to—I was just going to say that Donald Trump uh, actually just uh, uh, ripped on our our Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, oh. and uh, one of his aides actually said there's a special place in hell for him. For Justin Trudeau? I'm not kidding. He said there's a special place in hell for people who for people like Justin Trudeau. It's the fifth <laughs> fifth ring of Dante's Inferno for people who are too damn handsome. <laughs> Rip the toot. We'll gotta get an actual fart in there uh, in post. You know, Justin Trudeau, he's a controversial figure in Canadian politics nowadays. Is he? Well, he bought a pipeline, for God's sake. Oh, yeah, that was pretty bad. Remember how he spent millions of dollars on a pipeline? Mm. This is a political podcast, all of a sudden. We've gone political. Do you follow Canadian politics, Dr. Fraser Crane? Oh, thank you for the doctor. Uh, well, uh, to be perfectly honest, I have trouble following uh, politics south of the border. As I, uh, Over the past 14 years since I ended my radio show, mm-hmm. I've uh, been a bit of a journeyman, uh, so... Uh, not been paying that much attention, but I, I, if I have to say, if I have to give my opinion, I, I quite, I quite like this Justin Trudeau. You know, yeah, kind of a, a journeyman uh, like myself, I think. You know, he, in what sense is he a journeyman? Well, uh, you know, you know, before becoming uh, the 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 highest office in the land, he did, of course, <laughs> uh, spend time as a teacher. And of course, as a yoga instructor, and of course, as a <laughs> snowboard instructor, and, you know, I love that he just tries everything that he can before he settles into the office that he was truly born to be in. Yes, truly tried, tasted from every uh, dish. Teacher, yoga instructor, and snowboard <laughs> instructor. Is that true, or are you just ripping on him a bit? Oh, no, I believe that's true. I read it on a uh, computer. <laughs> You really, really stopped learning about technology at radio, huh? Well, once again, 14 years ago, I did, of course, end my show, and mm-hmm. uh, my life came to a little bit of a halt, but uh, I won't delve into that uh, just yet. What's a negative on Justin Trudeau? I don't know if you know enough about Canadian politics to nail that. Oh, the man is too beautiful. <laughs> too beautiful. I don't know if that's a negative, but with me, you've got to be hiding something if you're that beautiful. <laughs> uh, we've really run out of things to say about Justin Trudeau. I'll say that uh, I think he's... A limp dick piece of shit. <laughs> okay. I am sort of the... Hey, let me come out swinging here. The only good thing he ever did for this country was buy a goddamn pipeline. Wow. And fall down the stairs. Remember when he fell down the stairs? <laughs> I do remember that. That was pretty funny. Oh, wasn't that nice? That was on purpose, though, as, a, as like, a jo- like a Just for Laughs gag. It was a that was, French, that was That was for like a French television show or something. <laughs> yeah, that was... They love those things. Oh, so God, that's that. 100% of French programming. Yeah. Come at me, Quebec. Yeah. Come oh, at me. Totally, there's nothing wrong with that. They make some of the best uh, films in the country. Either, if, 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 the best. No, Xavier yes. Dolan. Yes. Are you a fan of his, Mr. Crane? Dr. Crane? Uh, yes, actually. <laughs> Xavier Dolan. Xavier Dolan has quite an exceptional talent, of course. But I think his movies are very, quite uh, evocative. You know, these artful pieces of film that uh, not just star uh, 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 Canadian cinema, but evoke so many different eras of cinema, you know, and so many different types of filmmakers like Almodovar and, of course, Wong Kar Wai. Oh, Just sure. a true connoisseur of world cinema, wrapping it all up into a Canadian milieu. But is she the guy who made ice hogs? What? <laughs> what? You know, uh, what is ice hogs? I think it's ice, called ice, ice hogs. hogs not a movie. Or, Are you asking if the man, as we've just hogs. learned, inspired by Almodovar and Wong Kar Wai, 
<laughs> the art house Quebecois director Xavier Dolan made a movie called Ice Hogs. This is a, a classic Canadian movie. I think Russell Peter uh, is in it. Russell, Russell Peter. Russell Peter? Peter? Oh, just the singular Peter. <laughs> yeah, the not, first. Not the plural Peter. And honestly, maybe Rob Lowe. And I think it's like a hockey movie. Ice Hog? I think it's called Are Ice Hogs. Are you thinking hogs? of Wild Hogs, but just wild making hogs. it Canadian? <laughs> There's Wait, Hedgehogs. There's no ice hogs. Hockey no. hogs, maybe. Hockey, Hockey hogs? heads. Are you sure it's hogs? It's. A- <laughs> I'm seventy percent sure it that be? it's hockey and hog related. So the title, hockey and hog. And I'm pretty sure uh, Puck. Canadian actor Mark you're not Fulmer making any is Puck sense. pigs, G- goon, puck hogs, goon. You're thinking of goon. It's not goon. goon. <laughs> and it's not you're goon just, too. You're thinking of slap shot. Maybe it has puck. Maybe I puck hogs. Like there have to be a finite number of Canadian hockey movies. We will get to <laughs> the bottom of this. I'm gonna Google this. Yeah, but, Google uh, it. But let's get everyone Googling hockey <laughs> hogs and just see what comes of that. <coughs> no, there's nothing. There's nothing. That's nothing. That's yeah. not a title of anything. Well, no, that's true. Ice no, hogs. There's, there's a hockey hogs on Facebook. I think it's just a, a gym for people who like to play hockey. Yeah. Uh, that's it. And we're a little that piggies. what I was thinking of. But. Mm. Yeah, you're thinking of the gym that Russell Peter went to once. <laughs> not that Russell Peter's. Well, at this anxious. gym, let's just say at this gym, if you don't stretch properly, uh, someone gonna get a hurt a okay. real bad. Puck hogs. It is puck it's hogs. called puck hogs. I said puck hogs. <laughs> yeah, puck hogs. Oh. And Rob Lowe is in that. Uh, no, maybe he's in a Bollywood themed hockey movie. What? I don't know. What? what are you talking <laughs> about? Your brain is just. You know, all, I've smoke? seen so many of these things; they all kind of mesh together at one point. But what do you get when you combine hockey and Bollywood? Hollywood. Come on, we're having fun. So here we are. We've burned through all of the usual topics. Hawk, puck hogs, <laughs> Justin Trudeau. There's no time like the present to ask our guest to formally, formally welcome our guest, the, um, some would say, impossibly real, Dr. Fraser Craig. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for having me here. I'm, uh... Quite honored to be a part of this podcast program and to, to, frankly, breach the barrier, as it were, from traditional radio arts into future radio arts. That is a nice wow. way to Go look out. at the podcast form. Mm-hmm. Have you embraced the podcast in your own life? Is this your first time? Have you done others? I actually used to have a podcast, yes. Oh, you did? Yes, hmm. yes. See, after I left my show 14 years ago, I um, yes. once again went through a series of different uh, things, projects, one might say. And um, one of them was a, a rather short-lived, but I think a pretty good podcast. <laughs> oh, do tell. Do oh, tell. yes, of course. I have to follow <laughs> through on. <laughs> no, as fun as it would have been to just move on from there. <laughs> I had a podcast. All right. Yes, well, uh, if you must know, the uh, the, the podcast was... Uh, uh, I was rating various uh, uh, self-help books. And uh, I got to uh, about episode three before I realized that I had not turned on a microphone. Oh. Which was rather embarrassing. You know who you needed? Roz. Roz. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, producer Roz. Yes, well, you know, she is the, uh, the, the uh, station head of KACL back in Seattle. Oh, she is. To this yes. day. <laughs> yes. 14 years If you'd on. like to know where she is right now, uh, 14 years after. You know what? Of Let's course. catch up. Let's just get a timeline sure. of your life. Catch us up from Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what happened? Yeah, I mean, cheers, well, I mean, we know from the pilot well, of Cheers well. to present. <laughs> the pilot of Cheers. Pilot I don't cheers, need every I was, episode. <laughs> well, as we all know, I was just about thirty when I started on Cheers. Uh-huh. And yet, I've always looked like I am forty-eight. Even today, burn on you. As well, burn I on yourself. A nice... Well, actually, it was an insult that turned into a compliment because even now he still kind of looks like he's forty-eight. Oh, that's like. right. Yes, that's right. That's right. Mm, of course, it's a little judo insult. Not so. a bad eternal age to look, you know. Yeah, it's a pretty good. One. You know what I they suppose. say? Crane don't crack, mm-hmm. or crane cracks really early, but then that's <laughs> as cracked as it gets. <laughs> I don't think I've heard uh, that one just yet, but I, I, I'd rather like it. I'd, I'd use it. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, getting back to my life uh, recap, uh, thank yes. you all for being so uh, 
into it all. Uh, so I, uh, the end of my uh, 11 year tenure at KACL with my Dr. Fraser Kane Crane radio show, I decided to uh, move to Chicago. No. Yes. Oh, oh, wait. Where was your radio show before? In Seattle. Seattle. You were in Seattle, then you went to Chicago? In Seattle, uh, during the 11 years that I was doing a radio show, and then I left. I followed uh, a love of my life, Charlotte, Uh to Chicago Uh in the finale of my uh, tenure. You've skipped over Cheers, but I'll let it go. I'll let (laughs) it go. Uh, I've skipped over Frasier, frankly. (laughs) And... uh, (laughs) Uh, it was a grand romantic gesture, and you know how those things usually tend to be this really big, important, uh, wonderful thing. But uh, as it turned out, she was not into it. There was a reason that we were not meant to uh, be with each other. And so uh, that relationship fizzled out a little bit. And uh, for the past 14 years, I've been... Uh, well, I dabbled in starting a new business again, and that uh, didn't really work out. And uh, so I've been, once again, just sort of a journeyman, uh, going from town to town, uh, asking if... Uh, Asking a tuppence for some psychiatry <laughs> no. advice. <laughs> no, you <That's> were not. <laughs> Doffing my cap and... Uh, Just went out, out of the back of your wagon. Yes, basically. Uh, basically, yes. A, 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 a station wagon. A proverbial station wagon. And, um, the proverbial station wagon. <laughs> yes, as it, as it were. And uh, so I've basically been subsisting off of... Uh, um, Meals that I get as payment for just casual advice I offer in coffee shops. Uh, this is or a truly unforeseen turn of events. And, so uh, for the past fourteen years, you've been roaming. Well, yeah. and I started a podcast too, and uh, that's uh, that's another little episode in that adventure. Uh, and of course, uh, about uh, three years ago, I met uh, my uh, current fiance. Wow. A uh, bon vivant. <laughs> <laughs> and her name is Crandy. Crandy? Beautiful. Crandy, yes. She is a uh, Jazzer Size instructor. And she's <laughs> really getting me limber. Truly limber. That's horrifying. Oh. Because you're quite, you're quite old now. <laughs> and her name is Crandy? Crandy, yes. The, um, Crazy Randy. <laughs> Uh, well, no, I, I think it's a very old uh, Irish name, perhaps. Uh, I don't know. Perhaps. <laughs> I never questioned it. I uh, simply let her take control. This is. Now, this. I don't have a ton of familiarity with Frasier, the show, your show, Dr. Crane. The radio show, of course. Well, and also, now, uh, let me know. Wait, how is this working? <laughs> what are the rules? Yeah, what are the rules of this? So uh, Break down the physics for us. Yeah, because I've watched your life. No, we've watched your life. We've watched your life on a show, but you're here with us. Oh, yes. The... And we did watch your life before that when you were just hanging out with friends in a bar. In a bar. In the documentary you're talking about. Oh, so, okay. Oh, it was a do- it was do- th- Those were documentaries. Yes, the documentary of my life. Yes. Yes. Oh, you, you, so you let, you let someone in your life for like 20 years, essentially. Yes. Yeah, around that. Like mm-hmm. all documentaries edited to uh, resemble a farce. <laughs> a Shakespearean farce. Well, actually, that was a, that's a very interesting observation because I, I insisted, I insisted to the producer that we edit it so that it had a laugh track and it had a, a three act structure and it was funny and ribald because I, I truly think that life is itself a comedy. You know, uh, I, I certainly think uh, 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 had it correct when he. <laughs> I don't I'm know. Take, that's your, take your word for it that that's a real person. I think uh, 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 the uh, uh, Plautus, uh, whom I believe wrote uh, the Monikme, I could be completely wrong and just pulling that out of my arse, but uh, arse. I do think he, he certainly had it right when he, he wrote that hilarious play that, of course, uh, Shakespeare adapted as the comedy of errors. You know, you want life is a comedy, so let us sup on those meats. No, that's not. That's, that's I'm not. pretty sure no, I, that's I, I, not. I've studied the classics uh, in prep school. I'm pretty sure that's uh, wouldn't, direct wouldn't, quote from Wouldn't life need to be a feast for the meat? And I've never honestly payoff. ever supped on... Uh, supped on you, I guess you would sup on meats. Yeah, you sup on those delicious meats. I, uh, yeah, you would sup some meats. I think Shakespeare was well known for his mixed metaphors and just getting real vague at the end of all of his famous bone mows. Am I speaking your language now, Dr. Crane? Close. The word is bon, bon mal. Bon mal. 
<laughs> uh, Wait, what is it? <laughs> so can I just ask? So you yes, please. after after this tw- these this twenty years of the documentary, which by the way was fantastic. Thank you. Absolutely, really, really invigorating. Uh, and then th- why did you why did you stop? documenting your life for 14 years. No, because a man gets tired, you see, Andy. It uh, does wear on the soul quite a bit. And, um, well, you know, after a point, I I became quite tired of playing the character, as it were. I'm doing air quotes. (laughs) Yes, we (laughs) more than heard those. (laughs) Uh, Kind of got tired of playing the... You the... also said, as it were. <laughs> you, you put as many caveats around character as possible, uh, yes. I see. You might say I'm stalling. I'm, in fact, being <laughs> as precise as I possibly can. Now, uh, <laughs> But I wanted a bit of a change, a bit of a space to breathe. And, of course, I, once again, was pursuing a girl to the Midwest, where I'd never been before. In the East Coast, West Coast, Midwest! Turns out, it's the worst coast. You know... Oh. Not a ghost. It's not a ghost at all. <laughs> okay, so this is Char. Okay, just a brief catch up for me. Yep. Um, so this is Charlotte. You followed. What happened with Maris? Where the what the hell? I mean, I know. And what happened and, with Ross? And what happened to Niles? And what happened with to Niles? Where's Martin at? <laughs> what happened to Eddie? Didn't you have a kid? Give us the whole meal deal. You ever ran and in, run into Sam again and Woody? <laughs> Break uh, it down. It's great. Okay, wonderful. Well, if I yeah. Give us an entire, entire new season of your life, as it were. Oh. We want a whole eight years of just fun. We want three acts, oh. if you could. Just uh, that'd just, be great. Just okay. a word or two about where they're at. Well, of course, as you know, uh, my father, Martin Crane, uh, is married to Ronnie still, and uh, they're doing quite well. The hell is yeah. Ronnie? I gotta watch this fucking show. Well, she's the, the person he got married to in the finale of the show. He was off to end a show in a big wedding, and there's a big wedding at the same time that Niles and Daphne had their child at that clinic. Niles and Daphne had a kid? Yes, they did, and I named him David. I bet oh, I know why they named him that. A little what? dick. What? Like the statue of David. Oh, wow, um, Dad. Uh, that <laughs> was a uh, Okay. Is that good? So they had a kid. That's nice. They had a kid, yes. And uh, let's see. Uh, Roz is still, of course, the uh, head of KACL. And uh, Bulldog is Bulldog still working yeah, Bulldog. there. Who the fuck is Bulldog? You know the the, uh, the bald guy, the uh, the balding guy, the the bulldog guy, the guy that's uh, he. What, the what did bulldog he do? guy. You know, Bulldog, the bulldog <laughs> guy. No, he he was. What was He's he? The balding guy. You're talking about me. No, 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 you're completely bald. I'm talking about the guy that was... Uh... Oh, he's not. He's got his nice fringe. Oh, yes, he does yes. have a good fringe. His grass yes. skirt of hair around the back of his head. That's a perfect toilet seat of <laughs> head foliage. What a... <laughs> That's an odd way to describe yourself. I'm sorry. Deeply. I've been on the road for a long time. My metaphors, are like the Brontes, become what's around... The, your metaphors are like the Brontes? The Brontes. You know, uh, uh, Emily Bronte would use metaphors from the wilderness because she was on the, the, the moors where she grew up. So okay. Like Wuthering Heights. I made a weird reference and tried to justify it with a joke and it didn't work. So sue me. Uh, okay, where's Eddie? Did Eddie ever die or did we just Eddie's pretend he lives forever? Eddie's definitely dead. Eddie's dead. Eddie lives forever, I think. Oh, no, Eddie's quite dead. Did they ever replace an Eddie on a show? Yes. The original uh, dog's name was, I believe, Moose. It's an actual fact. Uh, oh, they... I took change the dog's name for the documentary. Yeah. I insisted. And uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then the, 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 I had a second dog named Moose Jr. So I believe it was two or three dogs. Moose Jr. was his son. It played Eddie. I think that's an actual fact. Yikey Mikey's. Yeah, yes. Wow. So, mm-hmm. you know... Is you know you're you're an accomplished guy. You've achieved a lot. Mm-hmm. You but, have too. You've got a wonderful, wonderful son. Just a truly gorgeous, gorgeous son. If I may echo your language. Oh, you may very well uh, mm-hmm. do so, sir. And thank you. Um, do you have any uh, tips for Andy in terms of pursuing your dreams? I know you were here when he was talking about becoming a restaurant manager. Mm. Is that the right choice for someone whose uh, career in the arts has hit a wall? Or is it important to climb and pr- possibly batter your way through that wall? Well, you know, I'll tell you something. that My, uh, my, my uh, girlfriend, Crandy. Uh, fiancé, fiancé. Fiancé, pardon me. Pardon me. It's, uh, it's tough to say that for the third uh, person in a row. Um, 
She's been introducing me to a lot of interesting different things these past couple of years. And uh, one of these things is, is uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's this really interesting, fascinating cuisine. Uh, uh, d- dim sum. Have you ever had dim sum, Andy? <laughs> I, I am consistently baffled by how, you're cult- how cultured you are. It seems to really come and go. <laughs> you've never heard of dim sum. You've never had dim sum? I mean, I... Have not ever had dim sum. You've never had dim sum? No, I haven't. Yeah, Andy has a special diet where he eats exclusively chicken Caesar salads and Subway sandwiches. Oh, uh, yeah, yes. That is true. Well, that's absolutely. <laughs> I've learned that that is absolutely fine. Because again, Grandy uh, has uh, exposed me to a way of thinking wherein um, I don't have to always live in excess and, and try to rise to uh, uh, higher class standards all the time. You can have just sort of regular food, and, and dim sum is new. Dim sum is uh, 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 is is a fascinating type of meal where you have so many different little meals and you share them with your family and that sort of thing. So I think for you, you might try a bunch of different things before you arrive on what you want to ultimately pursue. Because as with dim sum, you take a whiskey drink. Take a whiskey. You take a vodka oh, drink. Uh, <laughs> Oh, Donnie boy. Jumbo Wumba. I was. Lager I drink. Was you take a cider nice. drink. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, in, all, in all seriousness, uh, you take um, a piece of uh, hargau, you put that on the plate. Then you take a piece of shumai, and you put that on the plate. And then you take a sausage roll, and you put that on the plate. Until you've got a plate full of many different things, of many different varieties. Now, I'm sure you're going to eat all of them and enjoy them. As you rightly should. But eventually... <laughs> Dr. Crane's having a meltdown. <laughs> but eventually, you will know what is right for you. So, so you're saying I should take different parts of my life and put them together to try and figure out what I actually want to do? Is that, is that what you're trying to say? You gotta take different uh, things you want to do and, and sample them all. And also, can I just say dim sum just sounds like a buffet. Is that what it is? Is dim sum a buffet? Dim, dim sum is like finger food oh, buffet. Andy. A finger food, like a smorgasbord. Oh, sure. Wait, oh, are you are Appal. you here to tell me? Was He's that was that culturally inappropriate it's, to say? Uh, no, no, it's kind of like a buffet. It's just a <laughs> buffet. Not, not that right. uh, it's more, more like tapas. It's tapas. It's tapas. Tapas. tapas yeah. It's more like tapas. I've never had tapas. Tapas is like a buffet. <laughs> So no. it's a buffet? And they like dim sum. It's a they tiny like, it's like buffet. A buffet. It's a small, it's like a child buffet. Dim sum, they like bring a little cart and like then a, they got a lot of like. So it's a mobile buffet. Kind of like, kind of like a, ba- a bunch of bamboo things. They pull a lid off and there'll be like a little like, uh, like a you know, translucent like, shrimp <laughs> wrapped in something. Yeah, like a nice translucent shrimp shrimp wrap or like a, a, a like a pierogi, but it's not one. <laughs> or, you know, like a little brock. And then uh, you pick all of that stuff out and you put it on a you plate take and you a bowl. Eat it. You take a bowl again and then you sample and you try. You look at it and you're like, I hope I like this one because <laughs> it's all expensive. Yeah, but that's do, part do of they it. charge you per per thing you touch? And yeah, grab? You, yeah, per like little bowl or whatever. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, oh, you, so it's not like a buffet. It's not like a you you, you just give them here's fifteen it's bucks. It's like a buffet, but you are charged for every single thing that you eat. <laughs> so yeah, it's so like a regular meal. It's basically. like a restaurant. <laughs> you just keep ordering more. But food. you could order anything you want. So in that way, it is yeah, like a buffet. They that's the glory of being but in a free like society. All, it's not like all restaurants. They don't stop you. They won't, they won't force you not to order something because you've had too much. Yes, dim sum restaurants don't hire enforcers who tell you to leave after you spend $15. And that's the nice thing, you know? No security eating. That's the dim sum promise. Yes. So, uh, it's, um, so I think I get that. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got a lot to... Uh, I mean, I have a lot of interests, uh, so I will look into those what things. What are they? What are they? Let's, let's get some. Let's I like hear video them. games. Ooh. Okay, ooh. Yeah, so maybe I could take video game management, manage, <laughs> managing some what video... Is that? What does that mean? <laughs> well, just managing programmers and things like... I can't learn code. Uh, that's too much. That's right. too hard. But uh, I could certainly manage people who can code. I could be the ideas guy, mm. and then they could re- make the game for me. I could write the video game. You could maybe. be a video game writer. A video game writer. Huh? Do you you probably... Any, uh... Sorry, go. Oh, I Dr. Was... Oh, Dr. Crane, please. Oh, Dr. Crane, please. No, no, after oh, you. Please, I wouldn't Dr. Crane, dream I of talking over a father. I could never. I could never. <laughs> oh, well, uh, since you insist. Uh, do, uh, do you have any uh, ideas right now for video games? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I have a, um, I have a video game idea that involves uh, time travel. It's, it's, a, it's, um, it's sort of an epic... It's an epic, epic piece that... It involves the uh, the Earth resetting every uh, every three billion years, and and uh, 
And essentially what happens is uh, even though the Earth and the universe resets every billion years, um, it, this has been happening for like trillion years. It's based off the Vedic cycles, uh, you know, uh, the, the Hindu Vedic cycles. Yeah, the Upanishads. Like, yes, exactly, exactly. But, but, but the difference in, in, in one of these cycles is that uh, uh, one, one thing stays the same. So uh, like, a, like, the, like a, essentially a, 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 there's an orb inside of the, uh, the Earth that stays the same and someone actually digs it up and finds out that it's, it's, uh, it's seen, they think it's alien technology, but it's actually very, very, very old. So that's that's I don't really know exactly what the game. video game. Yeah, I don't know exactly know what the game. Yeah, what's game the be. game part? <laughs> well, the game that would, just sounds like backstory. <laughs> to well, it's a, a very great backstory. I mean, well, 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 then then it's said, we boring. I mean, all I, right, it's very nice. I think it's really cycles. interesting. I spent I, that's something that I worked on since I was five years old. That's whenever I played like toys and stuff. That was my whole backstory for all the games. You'd be like, "Yes, mommy and daddy, this is from the Vedic cycle." No, I didn't do the Vedic cycle part, but that's that's the that's the thing. I had see, I had Transformers and GI Joes and He Man, and I, I they, all of the worlds didn't match up, so I had to make my own. I'll tell you what you were because I, I think I remember a bit uh, about what you were working on when you were five years old. <laughs> You were working on a little a little video game called t- prodding at your own dick and seeing what happened. <laughs> now that's a game. That's, that's a video inappropriate game. You were to making say. poo-poo in your diapy and you were begging. I was not touching <laughs> my penis <laughs> while I was pooping myself. No, no, was, no, no, no. You shouldn't be embarrassed, Andy. I think it's very common for, for children of that age to... Uh, Do we not need to talk about the me touching my penis at, at like a, 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 a prepubescent child. child? Do you know how many... Do you know what it said on 100% of your report cards? What? For the first four grades of school? Shows intellectual potential needs to stop touching himself and dumping in his diapy. <laughs> that should, is should not, not, that should did not, not be not wearing happen. a diaper you at this age. It is nice of the teacher to make it less severe by calling it a diapy, though, instead yes. of saying diaper. Quote, you unquote, are, kind of nice. You wore a diaper into grade school? You no, are. Dr. Green, you don't have to weigh in on this shit. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, let's hammer through a couple <laughs> quick topics because we got to dispatch them real quick. Number one, on the top of anyone's mind... Dr. Crane, what is your relationship with with Kelsey Grammer, the actor? We gotta know. Kelsey Grammer, the actor, yes. Uh, I think he's a wonderful person, and I think his uh, impression of me is a little bit too mannered. Ah, he does an impression of you. Yes, yes, everyone confuses us. He receives credit in the credits of your shows. Yes, he was a consultant, yes. But it says, he cons- says he plays, you, like, in it it says, uh, Kelsey Grammer, Dr. Fraser Grainer, like, it's... I've been working on my Niles Put you on the spot. Oh, oh I'm please. Like, can you tell me if this is anything else? to take me away from this confusing moment? <laughs> let's get it. So let's let's get just it. imagine Niles walks in and, and something happens and he'd be like, like, oh, Fraser. It's pretty good. Oh, my God. No, what sorry, the hell? Like, <laughs> sorry, like, I'm, I gotta get in my, in my proper headspace. So Niles walks in and he's like, oh, Fraser. No, that's Fraser. What does Niall that's sound like? I would say that sounded more what like. What the fuck? That sounds like a Wallace and Gromit character. It's like, it it's sounds like, like oh, Niall. No, C-3PO. Fraser. Yeah, it is no. C3PO. Do, yeah, do C3PO. Yeah, when do C3PO. Like, uh, go, C-3PO go like this. Go like, oh, oh R2. Oh, oh Fraser. Uh, yeah. Do, do like this. Go like R2. Like, but R2. R2. Like, you, like you can't believe it. R2. You're scandalized by what R2 has done. R2. R2. Fraser. Something like that. R2. That's good, Andy. Yeah. It's almost oh, a... R2. Yeah, that's R- not that's R2. 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 I mean, just to do a C-3PO impression with just the word R2 <laughs> is pretty impressive. It's hard. R2. Mm, that was pretty good. What do you think, Doctor? I think it was wonderful. Thank you. I... <laughs> As a man who loves a good opera, I know when a voice has nailed it. <laughs> I will say it's almost as if, almost as if my brother Niles and C-3PO are a part of an ongoing tradition of a specific trope in TV and film. What would you describe that trope as? Oh, the fussy, harried man. Fussy, harried man. <laughs> fussy, harried man, yes. yes. <laughs> Niles Grain, you've got C-3PO. Who else? Who else? Oh, probably Ross a couple Geller Disney. Ross fit into that? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Not quite. I'd say a lot of Disney villains. One uh, of the odd I think you guys. might fit into that as well. Oh, the, the, the Shrek King. Oh, the Shrek King? The Shrek King, King yes. yes, yes. Anything, uh, 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 what's his face is played? Uh, uh, John Lithgow. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to say John Leguizamo, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> certainly not. The Neither most. fussy nor harried. <laughs> yes, I guess from Third Rock from the Sun. 
John, uh, John Leguizamo from Third Rock from the Sun? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, John Leguizamo from Third Rock from the Sun. <laughs> That's funny to imagine. Yes. Just a dad who's scary to all of his kids. <laughs> John were they his like kids on Zombo. Third Rock from the Sun? Were they his oh, children? I guess no. They were like just they were they were they well, were just a team. <laughs> they, they were his. What sub- a fucking weird. They shot. were his subordinates. He was the captain. They were his subordinates. They were going to take over the world, and they were sent down yeah. to do a to right. essentially Re- recon to do recon. Yeah, yeah, but then they started to really enjoy being but human. What was the reason? What was their cover for? Because I think to an outsider, they're just looking at a. Uh, <laughs> Two men, a woman, and then a younger man just living in the same place with the same name. Were they in family sin. or something? No, I think he was he was a, a widower. And then I think the uh, kid... His the, cover was that he was a widower? Yeah, I don't know who the... I don't think that was his wife. I don't think they played... She was the security was officer and she was yeah. frustrated because actually she was a male. And she was right. like, what, what are these? I don't know how to deal oh, with these. Right. Yeah, like that was a, that. there was a couple of jokes like breasts. that. Yeah, breasts. breasts. Exactly. And then uh, I can't remember who uh, the other guy was, the, the French steward. Oh, French steward. Rest in I can peace. do a good French steward. Is he still with us? Uh, French steward? French steward? French steward? French steward, is he Are, still with us? Fresh steward. I believe Mr. Le Francais Stewart is alive. <laughs> no, that's not how you do his name, you pretentious cock. <laughs> French Stewart's got to be alive. Yeah, he would have been born... in a, he would have been in an Oscars montage if he. Uh, passed. Yeah. Oh no, he would not be in an Oscars montage. Like Inspector Gadget Two. French Stewart. French Stewart. Maybe like an Emmy montage, but not Oscars. 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 He's never been nominated for an Oscar. I mean, French he's Stewart fantastic. Is, French Stewart has been in a hundred films, all great. I honestly thought he was amazing as a kid. I thought he was probably one of the best yeah, comedians he's around. Funny. Has... I feel like I saw him in Captain Corelli's Mandarin. 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 <laughs> You're not kidding. He was in 111 movies. No, for real? Yes, for what real. What the fuck? What Whoa. is he in? He's in 111 movies. Oh, my God. Or Are you so, sure you're oh, not reading Chris? He was in Stewart? Roseanne as Dean, I guess. Recently. Oh, yeah, recently. Hmm. The new one. The one that is no more. Yeah. Uh, put another time stamp on this episode. This well, I mean, that's what we're doing. Aren't we? I'd love Rose to see a, a remake of Puck Hogs with French Stewart at the as a coach. Oh, I don't think Puck Hogs. Puck Hogs didn't really uh, was not well received. Oh yeah, so let's zoom into that because Andy, you found some uh, IMDb reviews for Puck Hogs. Is that right? Yeah, it's 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 they're not. Fr- I mean, IMDb is a swamp. Uh, a lot of the times, but they, this, these ones are particularly uh, brutal, I would uh, well, say. Well, some of my favorite cartoon characters have come from swamps. <laughs> like who? Donkey. <laughs> Is he? Yeah? Was he from a... Do- no. Not Donkey Shrek. himself, but Shrek, Shrek was from a swamp. Yeah. That's right. Donkey wasn't from a swamp. Donkey come from nearby. <laughs> but Shrek what from a swamp. What accent or what character Shrek is that? Shrek from a swamp. <laughs> Donkey. Donkey come from nearby. Donkey come no from one... nearby. <laughs> but like, Believe a Scottish uh, do use. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Full verbs. Donkey come not from here. He from far away. You're doing Shrek caveman. Caveman Shrek. That's a good Shrek. All right. So uh, this one I'll read and then we can move on. This uh, One out of ten. <clears throat> this is a Canadian movie. Uh, an appalling abuse of Canadian tax dollars. Oof. <laughs> Ouch. Not only am I offended that such an awful movie came out of my country, it represents everything that is wrong with the Canadian movie industry and the ridiculous politics behind it. I feel like this guy has an agenda. The end credits yeah, reveal to me wait that... Wait a second. Written by Stephen Harper. <laughs> this guy obviously is in the industry and he's just bitter, I think. Is I think he's think? a bitter... I think he might just be a guy who's mad about how his tax dollars are being spent. <laughs> I mean, it could be. You know, that's, I mean, that's I feel a, I feel big... awkward reading these because we know pretty much everybody that was involved in this. You movie. know, I mean, good people do bad stuff all the time. Yeah, Charles Manson. <laughs> Charles Manson. Yes, his music was quite beautiful, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So he's sort of the opposite. Bad people do good stuff occasionally. Of course, yes. If we are to follow the journeyman slash dim sum sensibility, uh, <laughs> to return to this, you are desperate too. <laughs> uh... I feel that one's course in life has to come with a series of mistakes. And once you make a mistake, you learn from a mistake. You have to have the courage to fail. 
before I, you have. I just wonder if. <laughs> he cut off Frazier in the middle of his wrap up sentence. What the hell are you doing? I'm he sorry, was putting Frazier. the Frazier bar right. on it. I'm sorry, Frazier. I honestly lost it. I just. just I know in the, the corner. Frazier finishes. Chug an energy drink. That's he okay. Might have had I, something important to I, say I, about I'll just hot put the quick, quick bow on it. It's just, it's just a thing that I insist that I do every time. All right? So here's the little Frazier yeah. bow. Put a bow, put a bow. It's the best thing to do for you at this, the best time in your life. Not someone else's, oh God. but yours. Yeah. And you are the star of this movie. That is your life. This isn't. And that's... Poorly done. Don't uh, cut him off. I'm not cutting him off. He's fucking it up. <laughs> that's a Fraser Crane. Advice. <laughs> That's a Frazier Crane advice. <laughs> Truer words were never spoken from the silky mouth. Of Aren't you glad, Doctor Crane? We let him finish. Hey, man, he was on something before you <laughs> fucked him up. You're right. I'm sorry. It was three words from a beautiful dismount, and then you put your foot in the way, tripped him, and forced him to start the whole stunt over again. All right. Well, this is the part of the show where I sing a jingle about some bullshit that's related in my life. You do know that I was once... I had a radio show. Did you guys know that, Andy? No. Everardo? Oh. Dr. Crane? Yeah, you wouldn't have heard about it. But it was an advice show myself. I had it on the west coast of Canada in Vancouver, British Columbia. And it was a show about um, about uh, outdoor lifestyle. And it had a fun little jingle, uh, which introduced each show. And it, it went something like this. It went, um, so you're thinking of going outside today? Couldn't recommend it more. It's a beautiful day outside today. Let me tell you what's in store. You got mountains, ocean, beaches of sand, and streets, and you can have a coffee. Everything's open to you in Vancouver. That's not bad, right? Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Wonderful. Pretty nice. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it was just sort of like about encouraging people to get outside. And then that show was uh, promptly canceled. But I was rehired by Grouse Mountain's gondola crew to uh, 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 broadcast live from the top of the Grouse Grind. I've, I've done that. Have you done the Grouse I've Grind? I've actually done the Grouse Grind. Um, what was your time? Oh, I didn't. I don't remember. I was seventeen, but uh, I remember going up it and taking pictures and so. then gondola down. Uh, yeah, and I gondola Classic. down. It was fantastic. Well, I, I didn't know little, you did a song about. Uh, it. Yeah, I had, well, I ran a short, uh, small range uh, radio station from the top that was mostly just played in the gondola for people going up and down, and then for a couple people at the foot of Gross Mountain who would kind of pirate the signal, and it, and it was a show, and it went like this: it went. Uh, so you think it out? Yeah. So you think about walking up Grouse today? I couldn't recommend it more. Take a little hike up Grouse today. Let me tell you what's in star. We got a mountain. We got trees and stuff. Up here at the peak, you'll find a little someone. That's me. Wait, Welcome so- to Grouse Mountain, everyone. Yeah, well, hold on. So the song was about you, like you personally. You come to Grouse, and then they'll meet you, someone that, that they don't know or isn't yeah. famous at all. Yeah. Were it was... Working the radio of the gondola in case there was an emergency or so something? So technically, I was the one who was supposed to provide announcements over the Grouse gondola in case there were delays and sort of just like, you know, a bit of a tour guide uh, quality. But I turned it into a radio show with a very specific focus on YT. Yours truly. Did anyone actually get up and try and meet you? Or Some people would come in and sort of peek at me and be like, oh, there he is. And then they'd hit the road. And then I had a third radio show. Do you guys want to hear about it? Please, yeah. yes. It was from the first ever Lululemon store in Vancouver, British Columbia. Oh, really? In okay. Kitsilano. It nice. was from the Lululemon store. We broadcast live. And it was Lulu Radio. LFM. 93.4 on your FM dial. Oh, welcome. And then I would do a uh, jingle, you know. It's just like people know. And I want all something like, Oh, baby, 
I'm so tired of clothes that don't fit me right. They feel too <laughs> stiff on me. Ooh, baby, I wouldn't mind some clothes that fit me nice and tight, but still move when I move. Oh, yeah, I want something that's elastic for my yoga and my life. <laughs> Lululemon, I love you. Be my wife. <laughs> that's nice. That's great. Welcome to Lululemon. Also, also, that's there was a whole station. Lululemon bought a station. Lululemon had a FM, station. FM. I mean, that means it was for a whole city. Ninety-three point four FM. And it was Lululemon. And we what kind competed. of music? We competed. What kind of music did they play? It was the sound of people satisfied pulling on uh, Lululemon pants for the first time. Oh, it was just fabric rustling. Just fabric? It was fabric, and then, you know, with the sounds they'd make, like, oh, wow, yeah. Uh, for the whole <laughs> and, then, and then we also got swollen members to come in a bunch and uh, perform live in the studio. <laughs> Wait, with, with Mocha only? We or? were the only station that was exclusively fabric sounds, people's reactions, and swollen members' live performances. North Vancouver's finest. North Vancouver's finest. That's cool. And they would occasionally bring their friends from Battle Axe Records. <laughs> were, they, were they in North Vancouver? I know Swollen Members, by the way. You know them. Of them, yeah. Uh, yeah. Were, were they in North Vancouver? Lady Venom, you know, uh, oh, yeah. et cetera. They, got, they were from North Vancouver Coming Battle through. Axe Records. Sure. Wow. And uh, they would come to the Lula Lemon store live, and they would perform outside people's change rooms <laughs> while they were trying to change. Would they change the lyrics of their hits? They would. Almost every song became about wishing there was a glory hole or creating a glory <laughs> hole. And Mad Child, the filthy white one, was and his verse would almost exclusively be about uh, how close he was to climbing under the stall and what he was going to do when he got there. He'd go, man, child, he's coming, come and get you under the star, looking, look, look what I got now. And then you'd hear screams, and then it would inevitably go to static or a call signal sound, and then we would have to, we have to recover from the technical difficulty. How long did this station last it for? Open. It was officially on the air for six hours. <laughs> But that is a good feature to... Uh, we have the highest ever sexual harassment lawsuit to hours on air ratio <laughs> in the history of radio. We had 15 lawsuits filed against us in the span of six I hours. I think you should have stopped after one. You should have pulled the station <laughs> down. A real would have, could have, should have experience. Let's just say that Swollen Members was not invited back to that little lemon store for a full week. All right, this is the part of the show where we like to shift gears uh, and uh, round out our episode with a little trivia or something akin to that from our intern, Everardo! All right, so uh, this is more of a game, not so much a, a trivia game, but a game called Real or Fake, where I'll give you... <laughs> This is a creative title, uh, where I give you the title and logline of a TV show, and we guess if it's a real Netflix original or not. Mm. No, oh, all right, sounds it. good. You know, I figured because, you know, Frazier's here, he had a show. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't something. a show, it was a documentary, remember? Right. <laughs> 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 so it's kind of like a real or fake with that, too. Sure, okay, great. All right, so is this real or, or fake? Uh, free Rain. She was hoping for a quiet summer vacation in the country... Instead, she found friends, thieves, and a horse in need. That's real. Holy shit. That's real. That's hard to tell for me. <laughs> That's real, you That's say? That's absolutely real, yeah. That could be any CBC Doc. show. Yeah. That is a horses. lot of CBC shows. <clears throat> I will say... That's Heartland. <laughs> it could... It, or is Plus it Free Reigns? I'll say real. I'm going to say real mm. as well. I'm going to say real as well. That one is real. I honestly thought it was Heartland. I, I forgot that you gave me the title. <laughs> Theme, it honestly so. could be Heartland or yeah. whatever CBC show I about love horses CBC, is though. currently. CBC is fantastic. Oh, yeah. Love them. Love them. Can't say enough about them. If there's one thing that's certain, we didn't write that review of Puck Hogs. It's not a CBC show. It's that's true, a movie. but that's just some, just some general slander of the uh, uh, public funding system. Yeah. Anyway, okay, Wait next one is called Ghost Prom. 
Ghost prom. Ghost prom. Fake. It's real. Finding, <laughs> a pr- real. finding a prom date is hard, especially if half your en- entire graduating class got killed. Half? Oh, that's fake. <laughs> half your class? Half? Why half? Um, I don't know. Or <laughs> sure, real. Fuck it. Dr. Crane, how do you feel about this one? I would say f- fake. Why, why half? Why not the whole class? <laughs> and then one person the real did. fish out of water sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Is my those are my that's my thinking on that issue. Yeah, um, I, I'm gonna say fake too. Yeah, no, that is fake. That's and fake. Uh, to address the half, I I did cross out the word. I originally wrote half, crossed it out, but then for some reason read it anyways. Oh, in my uh, you can see. It. I <laughs> saw it, <laughs> and I don't know why. I guess I'm that was the giveaway. Stupid. Yeah, that was the giveaway. Well, yeah, you never kill half a class. <laughs> uh, still, there's still people to go out with, yeah. presumably. Oh, okay. Anything could be closer because of a survivor's guilt. <laughs> All right, so uh, next is called Samurai Gourmet. Recent retiree Takeshi rediscovers his passion for food and life by getting in touch with his inner warrior and eating what he truly desires. This is real. Oh, I've seen that. It's real. That's real. That, You've that is real. seen it? Yeah, it's is a it wonderful good? show about a man in a crisis after his <laughs> job is over. And I related very hardcore to it, <laughs> honestly. What do you think about it? Samurai Gourmet? Well, no, it's real. it's real. Oh, it's real. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just said we had seen it. No okay. dissent among the ranks. We're all yeah. banding together on these yeah. answers. All right, uh, final one. Uh, the gazebo. They thought they were just going to enjoy, enjoy, enjoy the outdoors. <laughs> it's fake. <laughs> but once they got into the z- gazebo, something was keeping them from getting out. That's so poorly written. <laughs> like we can tell, like the written, the like you, you're just bad at writing these. Like, <laughs> Half of the words are crossed out with him trying again. <laughs> I don't know if I'm fully convinced. I'm going to say true. You were going to give him a reel on yeah. that one. They thought they were going to go Thank enjoy you. the outdoors, but once they got in the gazebo, they had a hard time getting out. <laughs> Even be. grammatically, that is a monstrosity. <laughs> like, as soon as in word two, I was like, no. Well, I mean, it could be real. Is it? Is it? Well, the, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, it could be. In but the fact that you guys... anything is possible. There is a movie called The Gazebo, 1959. But uh, <laughs> this is how it's... No, never mind. I'm not going to it. described as another guy. waste of taxpayer dollars. <laughs> <laughs> More like gazebo. Oh, what? How do? What is gazebo? Real quick, real quick. What's gazebo? It's, a, it's, uh, it's super long. It's the explanation's way too long. Uh, Give it to us. Uh, all right. Television writer and director Elliot Nash and his wife Nell have a happy marriage. One day, a blackmailer informs Elliot that he has. Nude photos of his wife, Nell, taken when she was yes. 18 years old. Yes, the yes. blackmailer, a certain Dan Shelby, threatens to ruin Neil's reputation and her Broadway stage career if Elliot refuses to pay the ransom. Elliot agrees there to pay know. the blackmailer. <laughs> this, I know, this is so no, long. No, what the hell's going on with your voice? Oh, I don't know. I just <laughs> think I mean, like, rap Vincent Price as you get through this blurb. <laughs> the blurb is and like a page. Page. <laughs> in the spooky night. Do you want me to keep going? No, that's okay, fine. Yeah, who cares? I heard Nell... Yeah. There's only one movie about Nell in my books. Yeah, that one. The one the where she one goes Chicka Bay, Chicka Bay, and Liam Neeson falls for her. Okay. We want to thank our guest, Dr. Fraser Crane, for being here. Uh, it's a pleasure. Thank Woo. you for having me. Any last thoughts, Dr. Fraser Crane? I know you always like to uh, impart some final wisdom. Oh, yes, yeah, some final wisdom. As you walk down the road, sampling. Bits and pieces of the environment around you. Make sure you keep your head straight. End transmission. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> That's good. The final thoughts from Dr. Yeah. Fraser Crane after he's blasted into the sun <laughs> on a shuttle built for one. <laughs> well, thank you, Dr. Crane, for being here. Thank you to my son, Andy, the gorgeous boy, as always. Thank you to our intern, Everardo. Thank, thank you to our producer, good. Stefan. Uh, shout out to Battle X Records and uh, Mad Child is currently hiding under Dr. Fraser Crane's stool trying to get an upskirt photo. <laughs>